Let's switch our view right now to the desktop view by coming down the bottom right of the screen and choosing the desktop view. We can do the exact same thing by coming up here to the upper left, choosing view, switching layout, and choosing the project only. And this is the project only or project browser. Right now we're looking at the all tab, which is showing us all the racks. If I come over here to clips, we're pretty much looking at the same thing. The only thing we're missing is the new effects, which is an actual effects rack that I created for storing my own customized personalized effects. And we should be able to see those over here in the FX rack. And there it is indeed, the one we were just looking at back over here, the new effects. Then the library tab is the same thing we normally see over in the bottom left of our timeline view. But what I want to show you is the media tab. And the media tab shows me all my media. It's a quick way of searching the hard drives for all the media brought into Liquid Edition. But what I want to look at is down here, the Machu Picchu. And you can see as I captured this stuff, I wasn't paying attention to the naming. And I actually named some of the Machu Picchu footage Sequoia. And I changed that in the racks, but here in the media tab, it's showing me the original attached name as I captured this footage. And one last thought here is this is basically an internal version of the Windows Explorer. It allows me to look at the hard drive and each project is separated here. Right now we're looking at the contents of the What's New project, the Machu Picchu number two reel. The little videotape icon over here kind of indicating that that's a particular reel. If I scroll down, you can see there's other projects and then there's still media. But the point I want to make here is I can double click on a clip, load it into a clip viewer, scrub through it. You can see the mark in and mark outs are grayed out. So I can't actually mark a clip here. Again, this is basically just allowing me to look at a clip here on the timeline. However, I can open up the color correction and apply color corrections. I can also adjust the audio playback level and do scene detection here. But the point I want to make is I can't click and drag a clip down onto my desktop to do some desktop storyboard editing. This is a view of the media sitting on the hard drive. Now what I could do if I wanted to edit this particular video file in my project, I can right click on it. And as before, we have create clips of selected media. Let me go ahead and do that. Now if I come back over here to the clips tab, you can see down the bottom there's a new rack called media clips. And there's that media file now represented as a clip. If I double click, now you can see the in and out points are available to me. And now I can start editing. I could also drag this clip down to the desktop and do some desktop storyboarding right here. So there you go. I'm just going to drag that, put it in the trash. Let's go back to the media tab. And what I want to point out here is there's new options when I right click. Not only do I have the option to create clips of selected media as we always did. Now there are two more options to the list here, create clips and then copy selected media to the captured volume. So the two options here have the common denominator of being able to copy the media to the capture volume. So the beauty here is I could actually use the media tab and I can be looking at files that are existing on a network and then using this new option, copy media to selected capture volume, it's going to copy that file from the network onto my designated capture volume in the media management tool. And then the option here to create clips and copy the selected media is going to create a clip in my media clips rack, as well as copying the media file to my capture directory, which would usually reside on the local system, perhaps your D, E, or F drive within your editing system. So that's another way to bring files from a network straight into your local system. And one of the nice advantages of this is if you have two or three computers and you're editing back and forth between computers, now you've got a really fast way to bring files across from one computer to another. So while we're running around the issue of the media management tool, let's actually take a look at it and see what's new there. So I go up to edit, control panel, left click. I come over to the site tab, left click and then Media Management. Double click. Uh -huh. Couple new things here I want to point out. You can see separate volumes for audio and video, that's the same, but here we have Show Clip Names on Media tab. Takes longer. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, let me turn it off. We'll say OK. Goodbye. Go to the Media tab. And now you can see the names of the media have disappeared. So if I sort in List View, 
again, the names have gone. And it's just the little icons indicating that this is a video file with attached embedded audio. So let's go back to our Media Management tab, Site, double click, and let's turn that back on. Now, if you're working with a massive, massive, huge project, perhaps, say, a two-hour movie, and you've got hundreds of hours of footage with thousands of clips divided up all over the place, turning this option off and sorting by the PyCon view might make things a little faster for you as far as finding those particular elements. As you click on one of these reels over here, it has to go through and find all those files that belong to each one of those reels and then display it. And if it doesn't have to display the name, it's not going to take as long. So there we go. Now come down here with me to the media volumes, and you can see these are all the different volumes I have mapped into my project. But there's something new here, and do you know what it is? It's the uh, two columns here. There only used to be one column. Let me right click on this X. Set as default capture drive, that's what we always had before, but what's this other X? Ooh, set as import drive. So if I wanted to separate all the files that I import, versus all the files that I capture, I can now do that. So that makes my media management a little more precise. Nice little feature. So continuing along in that frame of mind, I also wanted to mention that these are movable, these X's. For example, if I wanted the Z media drive to be my default capture drive, right click up here, set as default drive, and now the X is at the top of the list. Vice versa, if I wanted the GS directory on the F drive to be my default import drive, and there we go, just like that. Now, the other thing that's new here is the Format Ranking tab, which is displayed as such. This really comes into play on a networked environment. This allows you to sort formats and choose which you want to display first in a media search and so on. So in a networked environment, let's say we have identical clips. However, one was captured in a very low-resolution MPEG-2 quality, and perhaps the other one was captured in uncompressed YUV. If we wanted the YUV to be at the top, we would choose this, move it up to the top, and you get the general idea. But again, for most users, you'll never even have to bother with this. And to finally finish off our media management brief discussion of what's new, let's right click on a clip, go down to properties, open up the properties window, and the thing I want to point out is here is the actual name of the video file sitting on the hard drive. And those are the timecode values in point, drop frame, and out point, drop frame. VO for video number one. And the first number in the computer world is zero. So there you go. And then if we come over at idif.avi. So I captured this in the DIF format as an AVI file, which is one of the two choices that I have coming down the 1394 pipe. Let's just go over to PAL and click on this guy. Now it doesn't really tell us, it says PAL down here, and the name of the file itself is the actual name stored on the hard drive because this was an imported file, not something I captured. However, had it been captured, it would have given me the timecode in and out points, and instead of D or N for non-drop frame, as we saw, over here, instead of the D, it would have said P for PAL. So there you go. A couple of differences there in the naming conventions of the actual files. And then one final thought on media management. If I right click on this clip, go down to properties, let's just examine what's new in the naming conventions of the actual file name, the media file name versus the name of the clip. So what's the difference? This is a clip. This is metadata. This only exists in the project file versus the actual video file sitting on my hard drive. This points to the video file on the hard drive. And you can see over here is all the pointing information. If I go back to the general tab, here is all the metadata. Perhaps you've seen me change multiple clips from stereo to mono or vice versa. That's basically because the stereo mono playback condition is metadata driven. So if I'm capturing video and two channels of audio, as I did with this particular clip denoted by the V, the A1, and the A2 tab, in the logging tool I have the ability to decide whether it's going to be a mono or stereo file, but in actual fact, if I'm capturing two channels of audio 
Liquid Edition is going to capture them in discrete, separate files. And then depending on what the condition is here, it's going to play it back in either stereo or just mix both tracks into a mono mix. So this is metadata. Here's the timecode values, the in point and the out point coming from the Machu Picchu tape, number two. You can see I gave it the name of Sequoia. Let's change that. We'll just say MP. There we go. So now I just changed the metadata of the information that resides within the project. However, the video file hasn't changed whatsoever here in Liquid Edition version 6. Mm -hmm.